Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romance recommendations with the forced proximity trope. I adore the forced proximity trope. Like it causes so much tension and angst, like I love it. Um, I also would love to say that this is a collaboration with McKay over at Oh Hey It's McKay. I'll link her video down below, her channel down below. Be sure to go check her out. I love her so much and I just really wanted to do a collab with her. So be sure to go check out her recommendations. I cannot wait to see what she recommends. Also, after watching her video, if you want even more recommendations, I have done this trope video before, so I will also leave my other recommendation videos below as well. I have a 10 recommendations with the forced proximity trope, so let's get started. The first one that I absolutely love is Next of Kin by Hannah Bonham Young. This is the romance between Chloe and Warren. They both have to become roommates for their own respective reasons, even though they don't really know each other all that well, um, because they're both trying to get custody of each other's, like, their respective siblings. So Warren's trying to get custody of his, um, I think like teenage brother who just happens to be deaf. And also Chloe is trying to get custody of her infant, like baby newborn half sister because their respective parents are not really in the picture. So they're trying to get custody and Warren needs a better place to live. And Chloe needs better, like a better financial situation to help provide for her baby sister. So they end up moving in together and helping each other out. I love the relationship also with Chloe and Warren's brother because Chloe's dad is deaf. And so she knows sign language. So they're able to communicate really well. Obviously the forced proximity trope is the fact that they live in the same house together. They live in the same apartment. They are roommates. This is also like a grumpy sunshine romance. Warren is definitely a grumpy grump and Chloe is just the complete opposite. She's total sunshine and they both kind of get on each other's nerves at first, but then they decide to confront each other and basically say like, we're in this together. We got to figure this out. Um, and then they fall in love, obviously. But the fact that they live together obviously plays like a huge factor into their romance and the tension between the two of them. Another roommate romance that I absolutely love is The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott. But this one is even like a smaller scale roommate. So our heroine in here, her name is Zelda and she ends up moving to New York City um, to basically publish her uh, graphic novel. She's an artist and she wants to publish a graphic novel but she doesn't really have anywhere to live right now. Um, and then she bunts into Beckett who works at a restaurant she goes to and he kind of lets it slip that he is short a few hundred bucks for rent this month. So I was like, you know what? How about I like pay you? I'll like pay the difference for rent and I'll pay you to stay with you in your apartment until I can get up on my feet and start making money from a graphic novel. Like how about we just do that? <laughs> and so it's basically like strangers to roommates to friends, to lovers. Beckett lives in a literal shoebox of an apartment. So they are very close in proximity together <laughs> throughout this book. Emma Scott knows when to hit you with the emotions and the heartache. This is definitely though, like Emma Scott out of the ones that I have read, her like least rip your heart out of your chest book, but it is definitely emotional at times. So if you want like a good emotional read, like definitely pick up an Emma Scott book, specifically this one. I also have to mention, these two books, look, I just got my physical copies in for these. Like, look at how pretty. I'm obsessed with them. Anyway, um, so Flawless and Heartless, both of them have the forced proximity trope. So Flawless is the first book in the Chestnut Spring series. Our hero in here, Rhett, he is a professional bull rider. And um, this is the romance between him and his PR manager's daughter who is gonna like be basically be his like PR babysitter to make sure he's on the up and up because he's not doing very well with the press right now um so she ends up like moving in with him at his ranch his family ranch and so that's the forced proximity part and they end up falling in love I absolutely adore this book it's a great start to the series and then Heartless is top three favorite books of the year for me I love this book um it's a, a nanny romance so that's like the forced proximity part is she's the live and nanny to Cade and his son. So Cade is Rhett's brother in here and he's in need of a nanny for his son. And Willa is best friends with the heroine from this book. And so um, she gets like offered the job and she ends up living with them. This book is so good. I love it so much. Cade is like the ultimate 
man. Like, oh, I love him so much. He cannot stand that Willa is like around him all of the time because he is so obsessed with her. <laughs> He's like, how can I do anything with her around everywhere? Um, but I adored this one. If you haven't picked this one up yet, what are you doing with your life? Next, I have Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. So a heroine in here, she basically got killed off of her TV show that she is an actress for. Um, she's kind of an actress for our version of Game of Thrones. She gets killed off and she's like, I don't really know what to do with my career now. While I think about that, let's go on a vacation. And she finds this place to rent out on this property. Um, and that just so happens to be where the hero lives. The hero's grandmother owns his property and he helps take care of it. He ends up like picking her up from the airport and helping her around the property. But he is very grumpy. He's an ex um, hockey player. He got injured a few times and now um, he has chronic migraines as a result. So I love the chronic illness representation in here. Um, but there's a point where the heroine's like cabin that she's staying in or, or place she's staying in on the property um, gets like run down or there's a leak or something. I can't really remember, but she's not able to stay there. And so the grandma being the meddlesome matchmaker that she is, is like, you can just go stay with my grandson at his place. He has plenty of room. And so they have to stay in the same like cabin together. The forced proximity part in here is so much fun to me because like, you have like the meddlesome family member. One Hot Italian Summer is another one with the forced proximity trope that I really enjoyed. Definitely one you should pick up soon before the summer is over because it has a lot of good summer vibes. The heroine of this book is an author and she was actually a co-writer with somebody else but her co-writer ended up passing away recently and she doesn't really know how to write books on her own anymore and she's also dealing with the grief that comes with losing a best friend. She decides she wants to like dip her toe into the romance genre um, and her editor, I think, no, agent, manager? I don't know, it's one of those three. <laughs> I think it's manager. Her manager is like, I can see you're having a little bit of writer's block. How about you go take a little vacation, get a change of scenery and hopefully that'll spark the writing juices, you know? Um, I have a villa in Italy. How about you go stay there for a couple weeks? and hopefully that'll spark something for you. And the heroine's like, why not? She lives in Edinburgh where it's gloomy for her all the time. So she's like, let's go to Italy instead. When she shows up, she is very excited. It's so beautiful. And she even decides to like go lay out by the pool um, her first day there. And she's very shocked when a very handsome man and his young son like walk up on her and are like, what are you doing at my house? <laughs> why are you on our property? And she's like, what are you talking about? Turns out this is her manager's ex-husband and her son that she did not tell the heroine about. And she had no idea that they were gonna be at the house with her. So they're all living in the same house together because the hero is ultimately like, no, you can stay here, it's totally fine. We have like plenty of room. You need to work on your book, that's totally fine. Um, so they end up living in the house together in Italy where it is very romantic, <laughs> um, but definitely has the forced proximity trope in here. Um, they get in close quarters a lot in this book. And I love the son in here too. He like dips his toe and voice in here and there. I really enjoyed that. The single dad aspect, 10 out of 10. Another forbidden one that I would recommend is Twisted Games by Anna Huang. This is a royalty romance that's also bodyguard. Our heroine here has been bodyguard for Bridget, the heroine, for quite a few years, and they have slowly fallen in love with each other over the years. But uh, she is now the crown princess of her country, and there's like a rule for all the royals, they have to marry someone of noble blood. The hero is not of noble blood, so they have to keep the relationship a secret, definitely. And the heroine may or may not be trying to like redo the rule, trying to get rid of it, um, because she definitely wants to be with this man. So definitely forbidden at times, um, but they are in forced proximity because he has to live with her. Wherever she goes, he has to live in her apartment with her and that causes a lot of pent up tension between the two of them because like sometimes the hero's walking around without a shirt on or the heroine's walking around in pajamas like it gets good they are definitely lusting after the other person like yes a little novella that i have is a baby for the outcast by cassie mint the hero in here ends up hiring the heroine to be his live-in assistant he's a very popular and talented artist 
and he needs an assistant to live in his house with him because he can't really get around all that well. He deals with chronic pain. He was injured really badly. He can't move around like he used to anymore. So he hires the heroine and he is very attracted to her <laughs> when they meet, but he doesn't do anything about it because he doesn't want to make this woman uncomfortable. But he had definitely like daydreams about her and has many dreams about this woman. When the heroine comes in his room one night, uh, being scared from the storm outside, he thinks nothing of it. Like this is just a dream, right? And so they end up like hooking up and he's like, oh yeah, it was just a dream, but it wasn't. <laughs> um, they end up getting together, but he doesn't realize like he actually got together with her. Um, and uh, he's shocked when she tells him that uh, she's pregnant. He's like, how are you pregnant? Like we haven't done anything, but they have. <laughs> if you want a little novella, definitely put this one up. They're great for like cleansing your palate or when you're feeling slumpy, I pick up a novella definitely during those times because I don't like reading slumps. <laughs> For a historical one, I have The Temptation of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is book three in her Midnight in Scotland series. If you want to read about like Highlander romances that are really good under hyped, these books are fantastic. The audiobooks are also a freaking plus. This is about Clarissa and Campbell. Campbell in here is lusting after his brother's fiance's best friend, Clarissa. And she's just a shy little like babbly woman. Um, he doesn't think that he is like worthy enough for her. But then Clarissa gets threatened by one of her previous suitors and Campbell is like, okay, um, I'm going to keep you safe. Nothing's gonna happen to you. You're gonna come with me to this cabin in the woods that I own and we're gonna stay there and I'm gonna keep you safe so he can never find you. So they stay in this very small cottage in the middle of nowhere together for a little bit and they finally reveal their feelings for one another while they're staying in this cottage. It is so good. Like, I love this one. Worshipping hero to the max. If you want a worshipping hero, look no further than Campbell McPherson. And the last book that I have is an alien romance. This is Gilmat by Honey Phillips. This is actually the last book in her Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. Each book in the series is about um, these like seven brothers in arms, like their own respective romances with human women. They all live on this like snowy planet. The aliens all live on this like farm ranch and the humans have like their own human village. And one of the alien brothers like hears this tale about um, like the seven brides for seven brothers tale. And he's like, oh, that's how you get wives then. You just gotta go kidnap them. So he goes to the human village and kidnaps a bunch of human women for his brothers to be brides for them. So Benjar, the hero from book two does that. And he ends up kidnapping this woman from this book for his brother, Gilmat. Julie is uh, very sheltered in the village. Her mother is very controlling. And so when she gets kidnapped by Benjar, she's like, let's embrace this new adventure. I've never been out of the village before. So let's just, let's just do it. So she's actually, really excited when she wakes up in a um, greenhouse. That's where Gilmat lives on the property. He has these like powers to control and grow plants. Um, and she can't leave the greenhouse because there's like a raging snowstorm happening outside and she would like die for if she left. Um, so her and Gilmat are definitely in a forced proximity. They have to stay in this greenhouse for a week or two um, and they get to know each other and fall in love. It's really cute and sweet, but also hot, okay? Honey Phillips is known for writing like cute but hot romances. I really enjoyed this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with the forced proximity trope. Be sure to go check out McKay's video. I can't wait to see what books she recommends. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a leaf emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.